Welcome back, uh, everyone, to the uh, first anatomy lecture in the GI system. And today we'll talk about the oral cavity. So you can say uh, oral cavity or mouth, both uh, they are the same. So the mouth divided guys into uh, two spaces or two parts. The first one which is the known as the oral vestibule vestibule that means the entrance so let me show you first where is the vestibule look at the dotted uh, uh, these dotted lines this is the vestibule this is the vestibule guys and laterally superiorly also this is the vestibule this is space is the vestibule so the oral vestibule guys as you see is located or bounded between the teeth and the gum as well and the lips and cheek laterally so this is space I'm talking about this is space known as the vestibule so most importantly, when we mention uh, when we when we talk about the oral vestibule, we have to uh, remember that in this space, in this vestibule, there is an important um, duct. There is an opening for a duct for parotid um, duct that opens here in this. Uh, oral vestibule in this space look at the here in the inferior figure guys you will see here is the upper second molar tooth you know we have the first molar second molar and third molar of course I'm talking about the upper second one so opposite to the upper second molar tooth there is an opening here, which is the opening of barotid duct. So we have a barotid gland, guys, on the right and the left, and they have a duct, and this duct opens into the oral vestibule opposite to the upper second uh, molar uh, tooth. We'll talk more in details about the barotid gland and duct after um, two lectures, I think. So what we have else let us move to the back and um, go beyond these uh, 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 structures i mean if you go uh, behind the teeth and gum either the lower teeth or the upper teeth and the gum as well so you will find yourself uh, of course these teeth that uh, you know in the uh, socket create with the gum they create a kind of alveolar arch either the inferior one or the superior one so behind the teeth gum and alveolar arch go back you will find another space which is the oral cavity this is guys the oral cavity so you can say oral cavity or oral cavity proper Okay, back to the vestibule. Let us talk a little bit more about the vestibule. So again, let me show you the oral vestibule. Here is the vestibule. This is the oral vestibule, guys. This is space that's, as I mentioned, between the teeth and gum from one side and the lips and cheeks from the other side. So this space between them is the oral vestibule you can um, I would say um, you can uh, 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 notice clearly this vestibule when you um, just um, fill your mouth with air and try to um, puff your cheeks so say this this is your lips close like this and fold there and these are your teeth guys against each other so 
this space is the oral vestibule. However, uh, uh, let me guys uh, explain more. This uh, slit like space is the oral vestibule. And you know the opening of your mouth, this opening of your mouth is known as oral fissure. This is the oral fissure. So the oral vestibule communicates with the uh, external environment through this oral fissure. But more, more importantly, if you notice that uh, uh, the oral vestibule can communicate with oral cavity is through uh, a gap, this gap, which is located behind the um, molar teeth, the third molar teeth. This is the last uh, tooth, the known as third molar uh, tooth, either the upper one or lower one. So behind them, there is a gap, this gap, is the uh, uh, is the way uh, by which uh, the vestibule will uh, oral vestibule communicates with the oral cavity. Furthermore, which is I think, uh, lastly, you will see guys here that there is a, 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 a limit for the oral vestibule superiorly and inferiorly. What does it mean? Okay, I will show you. Look at the lip. The lip here, either the upper or lower lip, covered by mucus uh, uh, membrane. And this mucus membrane moved all the way down until it reached this area, this angle. Then it reflected again on the gum as you see here so this is the lower limit of it similarly with the upper lip this is the upper lip lined by mucous membrane line it until this point then it reflects on the gum so if you look here guys through this coronal section you will see your cheek here this is your cheek so it's composed mainly of buccinator uh, muscles. So this is a buccinator muscle. And the buccinator muscle, guys, covered laterally by the skin, but medially, so it's a buccinator that covered by skin, but medially it's lined by a mucous membrane. Here is the, that's reflected on the upper gum and also reflected on the lower gum. So I would uh, pay attention guys for this important point here. Again, I iterated that many times. So look at the parotid papilla. This an, uh, 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 an indicator or landmark against your upper second molar tooth there is a small opening of parotid duct, you know, a parotid gland with the duct, and this is the opening of the parotid duct. Notice that the opening of parotid duct, guys, uh, in the oral vestibule, not in the oral cavity, it's in the oral vestibule. Okay, now, this is the mouth. Now, we'll shift to the oral cavity proper of the mouth. We finished the vestibule, now let us move here. So, look at the mouth. You will notice from the first time you look to your mouth that it has a roof and it has a floor. And guys, you know that maybe that the roof composed from two parts. One is hard anteriorly and the other one is soft posteriorly. So this part is the hard palate and the soft part is the soft palate posteriorly. And you know the soft palate, uh, soft palate has like a projection here is called uvea, we'll talk about it. Now, this is the roof.
But what about the floor? You know, this is the tongue, guys. And, you know, the tongue, we can divide it into three parts. The floor of the oral cavity is composed or mainly represented by the anterior two-third of the tongue. This is the anterior two-third of the tongue plus to the mylohyoid muscle. We'll talk about it uh, uh, later. As I mentioned, that the oral cavity has, or our cavity proper, I mean, has a roof and floor, roof formed by the heart and soft palate, and the floor formed by the tongue. We'll talk about each one. So, let us start, guys, with the uh, palate. So, this is the palate, in general. So, you have hard one which is anteriorly you can feel it by your finger guys right just touch it by your finger and behind it and attached to it posteriorly there is a soft muscular one which is the soft palate attached to it of course or a part of it is the uvula you can see it when you look in the mirror so um what's important in the uh, uh, soft pellet guys that it during the swallowing um, when you swallow like food or a liquid, the soft pellet will contract and will raise up so it, uh, would be drawn superiorly so it will elevate superiorly why in order to close this gap and um, or let us say close the nasopharynx and prevents the liquid or food from getting up into that area so what's the nasopharynx we'll talk more guys about the nasopharynx and other parts of the pharynx after uh, three lectures but it's um, okay for now to know that the soft palate when you swallow um, food or liquid it contracts up and close this gap preventing the liquid and uh, food from getting up sometime it does happen and you feel like with the like a discomfort there so as I mentioned the palate divided into hard pony part the hard palate guys and soft palate muscular uh, soft part posteriorly and the uvula is part of it let me show you the first one the um, hard one look at it this is the hard one which is um, bordered by your teeth and composed from four pawns indeed two pawns but divided by sutures as you see here so mainly formed anteriorly by the maxilla and posteriorly by palatine bone here is the border between both of them so this is the maxilla they are fused together by intermaxillary suture and we'll, we'll, I will talk to you about um, their names and posterior we have a palatine bone there is a horizontal plate this part is the horizontal plate of palatine bone now why the anterior maxillary bones known as palatine process process that means a protrusion or something like protruded like this so those bones guys those are processes them related to the maxilla right but they are projected toward the palatine bone so we call them palatine process of of whom Related to whom? 
of maxilla. So they are palatine process of maxilla, and these are horizontal plate of palatine bones. Now, just to remind you that from this age, the soft palate guys attached, right? And this is the uvula. So here is the attachment of soft, uh, soft palate. So uh, by this way, the hard palate guys form the roof of the oral cavity and at the same time the floor of the nasal cavity let me show you here maybe we have a parallel view uh, you will understand what i mean okay this is guys the hard the hard palate right so this is the oral cavity and this is the nasal cavity so the hard palate guys form the roof of the oral cavity and at the same time, it formed the floor of the nasal cavity. Okay, back again, guys, to the um, uh, hard pellet. Okay, this is the hard one. Now, what about the soft one? This is the soft pellet, guys, that's attached to the posterior part of the hard bone or hard pellet. It's a striated muscles covered by mucous membrane from both sides, from this side and from the behind side or the posterior one. And um, it has a small conical projection known as uvula. It's also muscle covered by mucous membrane because it's part of soft pellet, right guys? Look at the mirror, you would see it in the middle line. Should be arms in the middle, right? Uh, just leave it for you, or, or you have to know that, uh, and you can feel it by the tip of your tongue. Uh, this is the um, hard pellet, guys, and that covered by mucous membrane, and the mucus or mucosa here form a kind of a like reds. You can feel it by the tips of your tongue. It's not completely smooth they call it, call it sometimes the transverse bellatine folds or bellatine rogue and in the middle there is a median longitudinal ridge or known as bellatine refi that ends up with the a kind of a papilla here okay so the soft palate guys attached to the uh, posterior uh, this is a soft palate attached to the posterior border of the hard palate and covered by mucous membrane from from both sides from upper and lower surfaces and it composed from muscle fibers, look at it here, aponeurosis, lymphatic tissue, blood vessels, and nerve, plus to the palatine glands, numerous, like there are many palatine glands. So, lymphatics, blood vessels, nerve, palatine gland, and aponeurosis plus to the muscle fibers. So, we'll talk about the aponeurosis and the um, uh, muscle fiber uh, and the uh, muscles and of course about the vessels and uh, nerves. Look at the posterior view of the uh, I would say posterior to the this is the posterior opening of the nose guys and uh, uh, this is the posterior opening, this is the nasal septum that divides the uh, nose into two uh, compartments right and left and this is the uvula guys look at it that's um, this is the soft palate of course with the uvula 
look at it, look at its attachment to the posterior border of the heart pellet. Excellent. Look at the fibrous sheath that covered it. So, this fibrous sheath, if you look at it, let me erase these things. Okay. Look at this muscle, the tensor villi palatini. The tensor villi palatini is the important muscle here. And look at its extension. This is the tendon of it. Then there is an expansion to the tendon of tensor villi palatini. Listen, it's tensor, not elevator. The elevator is more important than the tensor. But anyway, it does now focus on the tensor villi palatini. Look at the tendon that expanded to cover the soft palate and uvula. So, um, the important of the aponeurosis is that it this aponeurosis gives an origin and insertion of the five palatine muscles. We'll talk about them. So we have five palatine uh, muscles from the soft palate. This is the uh, another inferior view of the hard palate and soft palate so we have the tensor viri palatini muscle in which its uh, tendon expanded to cover the soft palate by its uh, a palatine abneurosis and we have an important muscle which is the levator viri Palatini, which is the only muscle that elevates the soft palate to close the gap and prevents the food from reflected up, as I mentioned before two slides. And we have the uh, masiculus uvula, which is easy to remember because this is the uvula, so this is masiculus uvula, and there is also pretty easy to muscles they create kind of borders anterior and posterior border or ridge to the uh, groove that contains the palatine tonsil this is the palatine tonsil right so there is a muscle that known as palatoglossus muscle that you know Palato from palatine, right? Glossus is inserted into the tongue. This is palato glossus. Another one, palato, but what? Palato pharyngeus inserted in the pharynx. Let me show you each one and give you like a, a brief about each muscle. Look at the tensor villi palatine muscle. This is before that we are looking to the uh, oral cavity from the back because you see the uvula from the back. Say you are in the pharynx back and look to the front. So this is the back of your oral cavity. This is the cone. Here is the opening of nasal cavity. And this is the uvula from the back. You can't see that in the mirror because in the mirror you can see the front of the uvula but this is the back of it anyway so this is the tensor villi palatine muscle in which its tendon uh, expanded this is the tendon of tensor villi palatine to make like a neurosis so it originates from the uh, auditory tube I think here is a clear this is the uh, auditory tube or pharyngeal tympanic a tube and this is the tensor villi palatine so it takes an origin part of it from the uh, 
tympanic or pharyngeal tympanic tube and part from spine of sphenoid and it inserted uh, 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 to form or the tendon of it expanded to form the palatine aponeurosis of course from its name you can conclude the function of it which is the to tense the soft palate right to tense it the other important muscle which is the uh, levator villi levator vilipratin which is also originates from the this is the levator vilipratin it was cut it because we have to cut it to see the tensor but here is like complete because we don't want now to see the tensor so look at here levator vilipratini muscle originates from the petrous part of temporal bone and also from auditor tube and inserted in the Palatine aponeurosis. You will see now always the insertion, guys. Palatine aponeurosis. You will see that many times. Palatine aponeurosis. So the insertion in the aponeurosis here that created by tensor palatini muscle. So it's the only muscle that elevates the soft palate. That's why it's known as levator, right? So, these are two muscles to remember. Vili palatini muscle, one tensor forming the aponeurosis, and the second one is the levator to elevate the vili palatini muscle to the, the, the soft palate. Sorry. Now, pretty easy one, which is the musculus uvula. This is the musculus uvula or uvular muscle that forms the uvula that we see in the mirror guys and covered of course by mucus membrane so uh, it originates i would say from the posterior nasal spine of heart palate where is that let me show you here um, this is the posterior nasal spine so it originates from here guys now it's clear and inserted in the connective tissue of the uvula itself so the function of this muscle is to elevate and retract the uvula try to say ah a h ah so you will see that the uvula moved a little bit up and vibrate so this is one test we'll talk about it so it elevates and retract the uvula up. That was the third one. Now still we have two pretty easy two muscles. Again, this is the palatine tonsil. I think in the previous uh, system you got an idea about or more details about palatine tonsil. Look at it. That's located between two arts, one anterior and one posterior created by two muscles one is both originated from the soft palate or palatine aponeurosis of soft palate the first one is the palato glossus follow it from the aponeurosis of soft palate and inserted on the uh, or in the tongue so in the lateral margin of the tongue so this is the first one and we have another posterior one which is the palato but what pharyngeus inserted in the pharynx both originated from the abneur palatine aponeurosis but one inserted in the lateral part of the tongue that's why it's called palatoglossus and the posterior one uh, inserted in the pharynx or lateral wall of the pharynx the between both of these muscles that create like an arch there is a palatine tonsil look at the mirror look at the mirror i don't know if we have a review here uh okay here is the first uh, here is the first arch 
This is the palatal closest. This is the palatine tonsil. And behind there is another arch. So guys, um, these are, uh, of course, the just for the function, just imagine the uh, location and origin and insertion of them. So the palato glossus, guys, when it contracts, it will elevate the back of the tongue up and will narrow the uh, oropharyngeal isthmus. This is the oropharyngeal isthmus. That means the opening from the mouth, oro, to the pharynx. This is the pharynx in the back. So it will narrow the, when it contracts the oropharyngeal isthmus by moving the palatoglossal arch. I mentioned that palatoglossal muscle creates an arch called palatoglossal arch toward the midline, of course. Now, the palatopharyngeus, guys, that's located behind it in the green color, also uh, originates from the palatine aponeurosis, as I mentioned, and inserted in the lateral wall of pharynx. So, when it contracts, it relatively elevates the pharynx and move also the palatopharyngeal arch toward the midline, narrowing it, guys. Okay. Okay, excellent. This is a better view, guys. This is a soft palate with the uvula here. And look at the palatine tonsil, which is clear here. This is the palatine tonsil. So, this is the palato glossal arch, and this is the palatopharyngeal arch. In between, there is a palatine tonsil. Okay, this palatopharyngeal arch, palatoglossal arch, this is a palatine tonsil. Here is also written here, guys. Okay. Let us now have an idea um, about the innervation of the uh, hard and soft uh, palate. Although here is like written the soft palate, but I'm going to talk to you guys about the hard and uh, soft palate. Pretty easy, guys. Look at the upper third molar teeth you see guys medially and a little bit posteriorly there are two foramina one is large and another one posterior lateral to it smaller one this one is the greater palatine foramen and this is the lesser one now from these foramen foramina we have nerves and the blood vessels pass it through here you see the nerves and the blood vessels as well so also here there is a blood vessel these vessels also should be here but they don't um, draw it here just to show you the nerves and vessels separated anyway so these uh, foramina are greater and lesser palatine foramina the, from the same the same name or the nerves and blood vessels take the same name greater and lesser palatine nerves and vessels so from the greater palatine foramen we have a greater palatine nerve and the from lesser palatine foramen we have lesser palatine nerve guys Okay, now the greater palatine nerve carries sensation. Listen, I'm talk about sensations, not motor. So, the sensation um, from the hard palate, from I mean the mucous membrane of the hard palate and from gingiva carried by the greater palatine nerve with the help 
more anteriorly with the nasopalatine nerve. This small nerve also helps the greater palatine nerve to carry the sensation from the mucosa of the anterior part of the heart palate. Now, this is about the heart palate. And the soft palate, the sensation from the soft palate, mainly carried by the lesser palatine nerve. Well, it's good to know that both greater and lesser palatine nerves are brands of maxillary nerve or known as V2. Maybe you have an idea, but in the next year you will take more about, you will uh, study more about that. You know the trigeminal nerve, which is a cranial nerve number five. It's known as trigeminal nerve because it has three brands. Ophthalmic one to the eye, mainly, and known as V1, and one to the maxilla and upper teeth and so forth, V2, known as maxillary one, and the third one, which is the mandibular one for the mandible, V3. So, the nerves that we are concerned, look at it here, this is the a branch of maxillary uh, nerve that gives greater and lesser palatine nerves. This is the greater one and this is the lesser one with the vessels, of course. Uh, sorry, this is a greater one and this is the lesser one. So the greater palatine nerve carries sensation from the Heart palate with the help of, of course, nasopalatine nerve. But the soft palate, the sensation from soft palate, carried by, guys, the lesser palatine nerve. Both of them are parts of uh, maxillary nerve. So somebody can say, okay, this is uh, the. Uh, sensation from hard palate and soft palate which is easy greater palatine with the help of nasopalatine nerve and lesser palatine nerve but what about the motor i mean the nerves that innervate the muscles of the in this case of the soft palate well you have to remember that all muscles of the soft palate is innervated by vagus nerve but not directly by vagus nerve itself the vagus nerve gives a branch or branch that consider a part of something called pharyngeal plexus a plexus of nerves that mainly innervates the um, palate, pharynx, and larynx. So, one, you know, this plexus formed by cranial nerve number 9, 10, and 11, and sympathetic uh, ganglion. So, in this case, the vagus nerve, which cranial nerve number 10, gives a branch to participate in this pharyngeal plexus. But, in this case, all muscles, as I mentioned, of the soft palate innervate uh, all muscles are innervated by uh, vagus nerve except one muscle, which is the uh, tensor villi palatini muscle. The tensor villi palatini muscle, guys, innervated by mandibular nerve, the V3. So this is the only muscle of the soft palate that not innervated by pharyngeal plexus by vagus nerve, I mean. So, it's written here. All muscles, guys, of the palate are innervated by vagus nerve. Of course, the vagus nerve gives a branch to the pharyng or pharyngeal branch, the branch of vagus nerve known as pharyngeal branch that, you know, participates in the formation of pharyngeal plexus. So, 
almost all those, as I mentioned by Vegas nail except tensor palatini as I mentioned which is innervated by mandibular nerve there is a branch known as nerve to medial pterygoid um, I would say maybe in the next year we'll talk uh, we'll, uh, we'll uh, know more about that because there are anterior branches, posterior branches uh, anterior branch and posterior branch for the mandibular nerve so yeah and each division or branch has a branch as well so this is that was about um, sensory and motor innervation of the palate now what about the blood vessels well some of them guys you know as we mentioned that we have a greater uh, palatine uh, artery and lesser palatine artery the same as we mentioned before a couple of slides uh, they accompany the greater palatine nerve and lesser palatine nerve the greater palatine uh, to supply the hard palate all the way to the front and lesser palatine mainly the soft palate but they get help from other two brands both are ascending brands one from the facial artery so this is the facial artery which is a branch from external carotid artery I think you have an idea when you talk the cardiovascular system it has a couple of external carotid artery has a couple of brands one of the anterior branch is the facial artery it gives directly a branch that ascends up to the palate called ascending palatine artery and there is another ascending branch which is the ascending pharyngeal artery so also this branch uh, which is a branch from also external carotid artery but directly right it's called ascending pharyngeal so this is the blood supply of the palate which uh, I would say easy let me give you just a brief about the pharyngeal uh, plexus look at the pharynx this is the pharynx uh, the muscles of these pharynx after two days we'll talk or two, two lectures we'll talk about the uh, pharynx in details but look mainly to the middle constrictor muscle of the pharynx the pharyngeal plexus mainly formed lateral to the middle constrictor muscle guys which is formed by cranial nerve a branch from a cranial nerve number nine a glossopharyngeal nerve Branch from vagus nerve, cranial nerve number 10, and the cranial part of accessory nerve, which is cranial nerve number 11, but it has two branches, cranial and spinal one. So it, we will talk about the cranial one. So, with the help, of course, of participation from superior cervical sympathetic ganglion, it's a ganglion located superiorly uh, in the neck. So uh, you will uh, read more about that in the uh, or no more about that in the next year. So all they participate in the formation of the what's known as pharyngeal uh, plexus. So as I mentioned, um, all muscles of the soft palate can um, innervate uh, innervated by pharyngeal plexus except tensor villi palatini muscle, which is innervated by mandibular nerve so clinically it's important to um, know that soft palate innervates by the vagus nerve through the pharyngeal plexus so you will when you test that nerve you ask the patient to open his mouth and say ah a h right ah you try try it try it by yourself look at the mirror and look at the movement of the uvula normally the uvula should rise and 
move backward, right? Should rise and move backward and stay in the middle. So, uh, when you swallow um, or speech some words, the soft palate would elevate up to close this gap, this pharyngeal isthmus, the entrance to the pharynx or nasopharynx, right? So this is the nose and this is part of the pharynx known as nasopharynx. This is part of the pharynx known as oropharynx behind the oral cavity. This part of the pharynx known as laryngopharynx. Forget that. Now, we'll talk in details about the uh, uh, pharynx. So, um, the soft palate, when you swallow or speak somewhere else, will elevate or rise up and close this pharyngeal isthmus and prevents the food and um, drinks from getting up into this nasal pharynx. This may be done, guys, as I mentioned earlier, by levator villi palatini muscle. Levator villi palatini muscle, the only muscle that elevates the mainly the soft palate. So, uh, the abnormality is the soft palate, and you were not to rise up and close that gap and abnormally is to deviate to the right or left okay so um, the palatine I'm not gonna talk about palatine tonsil because there is a separate lecture or, or, or although I think it's covered by the lymphatic system before a couple of weeks so uh, it's good to know guys it's, it's, it's common, I think, to see some people with the cliff palate. So it can be unilateral or bilateral and or median in the midline, right? So um, it needs like uh, to be corrected uh, surgically. And uh, furthermore, As I mentioned, the soft palate can be paralyzed and soft palate will not close the pharyngeal isthmus uh, when you swallow or speak some words, right? So it's good to know that. Regarding the teeth, not that much to say about the teeth, but uh, I want you guys to know that uh, teeth are held uh, in alveolar process of uh, and of course um, and uh, fixed or held with uh, periodontal ligament inside uh, those uh, alveolar processes or known as sockets and of course covered partially by the gum uh, those you know uh, we'll talk more I think about that uh, later we'll talk about the mandible uh, in the uh, uh, skeletal muscular system, but there are um, uh, like alveoli or circuits in the mandible, uh, in the mandible and in the maxilla. Those hold the uh, teeth with the help of periodontal ligament and covered partially by the uh, gum, guys. So, what I want to know that we have two sets of teeth. We have primary teeth and we have permanent teeth. The primary teeth or what known as uh, deciduous teeth, those known also the papi teeth. You start guys uh, see those uh, teeth by the age of six months and they are around 20 teeth by the age of two years. But between the second and sixth year you will start now to see the fallout of some or all of um, those uh, primary teeth because they have to be replaced by permanent teeth. Permanent teeth, guys, are 32 in total. 
by the age, I would say, uh, by the adult hole, you would expect to have 32 teeth. And they, uh, we, so we have uh, two central incisor, two lateral incisor. We have two canine. We have premolar teeth. We have two, right? We have the first one and the second premolar. And we have a three molar. First, second, third molar. First, second, third molar uh, teeth. This one, the last one, also known as wisdom teeth, which is uh, sometime um, you will not see it until like late or by the end of adolescence.